Hey there guys, welcome to the meat shop. We got a cool video for you today. It's a request from David Mendoza and Christopher Clark. I never thought of this idea, so I appreciate the feedback. Uh, they asked for a meat shop tour. So I'm gonna give you guys a little walk around the meat shop, show you my setup, and uh, maybe you guys will get some ideas for your home setups, or if you're running a butcher shop, maybe share some ideas through YouTube with you guys like this. So if you guys like the video, Give it a thumbs up and subscribe and uh, get started on our meat shop tour. Okay, thanks again for the video request guys. Kind of cool idea that I wouldn't have come up with on my own. Uh, just before I give you the tour, um, I've kind of designed this meat shop as uh, a sausage kitchen more so. It's not, we do cut and wrap pigs here, um, but it's more set up for a, a sausage shop. Uh, so just keep that in mind as we go through the tour. Like I said though, we do cut a little bit of beef so uh, behind me here, it's, it's kind of one main room. I got a 32 by 18 foot shop. Um, I didn't build the shop, I had to change some things in here, but uh, we bought it and we finished it up as a meat shop on the inside. So this is the meat shop, one big kind of floor area and up there I got a little mezzanine and uh, I'll kind of take you through the different spots of the shop and the, what we use them for and their functions in the day to day processing and sausage making so here we go so you guys have seen this angle before this is the cutting table when we're breaking down pigs or uh, cutting up steaks for the store we're doing it here uh, hunting season we break our our deer and elk and moose and stuff on here so in hunting season we do do a bunch of deer elk moose springtime up in Canada here uh, we do get a couple bears come through we just did a bear ham up this week for some guys um, so yeah, this is the cutting table, so we do all the cutting. Uh, pretty essential to any butcher shop. You'll see them, in, sometimes people got them butted up against the walls, stuff like that to save space. With my setup here, you know, we do do, you know, we kind of cut four to ten pigs a week on top of sausage that we supply to a half dozen stores. So it's a pretty main function or main feature of the functionality of my meat shop. So here's the cutting table. Most of the work is done around here and I'll get into some equipment behind me. Okay guys, yeah, so once we get all the meat cut up on the cutting table and stuff, it usually gets run through this bit of equipment here. This is my grinder, it's a mixer grinder. It's got this big hopper, you can do 150 pounds of sausage in there at a time, and there's paddles that mix it up. Uh, seven and a half horsepower, so it grinds up most anything. Uh, you can even ground pretty well frozen meat on there. And then just on the other side, I have the sausage stuffer. And then that table over there is my stuffing table. I know most of the videos I've been doing them on the table, but we're doing bigger batches for the shop, so we'll stuff them onto that stuffing table. And then down into the pro smoker, uh, where we smoke all the sausage, we smoke all the briskets, we smoke all that stuff in there. So that's kind of the assembly line. We'll cut it out on the table over there. Grind and mix, stuff, smoke. And then just on the other side of the smoker is the cooler. So. I'll be able to have a little look at that equipment. All right, guys, there's the grinder. And then over here, yeah, this is my uh, curing chamber. I've started to dabble in salami and stuff. But uh, this is the grinder here, 150 pound Holymatic with a mix and grind function. I got my little um, tote cart there, so it'll come out of the grinder throat here into the tote. Excuse my hoses, I should have wrapped them up before the video started. Then we put them into, this is a hydraulic stuffer. So it does, uh, we get 19 kilograms in there. So that's 40 something pounds in this unit. Uh, then onto the stuffing table where me and my helper, Cody Jackson, we, uh, we do all the linking and cutting and twisting there. Mostly Cody nowadays. And then from there, we pop her into the pro smoker and roaster. This is a great little smokehouse. Um, it's, it's an electric one, runs off an element. Uh, you can load the wood chips down below. You got a damper up above you control. And it's got a little box where you can um, punch in your temperatures. And if you're doing bacons and hams, you can set it and you know, walk away, which is pretty nice. This was, a, this was a really nice smokehouse. We did quite a bit of shopping. I'm also not getting paid for this. so, But uh, this isn't a paid promotion, I mean. But yeah, it was the best kind of entry level smokehouse we could find. Uh, it was, it was, it's kind of the base model and they have really cool stuff that goes up from there. Um, 
So that's kind of that's that's the sausage assembly line with the curing chamber in the background there. Uh, obviously, you got to have a bunch of totes and stuff um, to to mix your sausage batches in and whatnot. And I got a little bit of tabletop equipment behind behind here, uh, an automated slicer. Uh, so you just set your meat on here, close to the front, and uh, you, it's got a little motor, and it'll uh, do the automatic slicing for you. Here's a little vertical sausage stuffer that you guys see in the other videos. Um, that was my first sausage stuffer. I started doing moose and deer out of my parents' garage and that guy. Uh, this is a little tenderizer we use for making cutlets and minute steaks. So, you know, I do a little bit of work. And this is here is uh, the back side of my bowl cutter. The front side of this guy. And uh, I haven't made you guys a hot dog video yet or a bologna video, but uh, one of these days I'll get around to it. But basically, yeah, you load the meat up into that bowl. Get this out of the way and show you guys how this unit functions. These are really cool. They're kind of rare and they're kind of specialty. Unless you are running a sausage shop, you're probably not going to need one of these. You can also get away with like robo coops and stuff like that. But that lifts up. There's a little switch in the back. Sorry, it's not clean. I haven't used it in a little while. But uh, and then there's a set of blades and that bowl spins and those blades chop that meat into very, very fine paste, like an emulsion. And that's what you make hot dogs and sausage and bologna out of. So yeah, a little bit of assembly line on this table too there. I got a little scale for measuring out. I usually mostly measure out cheese and jalapenos and whatever else uh, that goes into the grinder. So there's that bit of the shop, the assembly line shop. Like I said, it's, I built, it's mostly all on one main floor here. So, and there's my uh, new sausage curing chamber. Uh, so we're gonna get into the salami here soon once I get the Alberta Health and Safety Code figured out. But here's another view of the meat shop floor. All the stuff going on over there. And uh, I guess, yeah, I'll show you the sink because uh, cleaning is important in the meat shop. If you're not clean, you're not gonna stay open. So yeah, it's just a little setup. I got a hands-free hand sink on the left-hand side there. A little stereo for my working alone and three compartment sink. You know, three different chambers there. And we set uh, the stuff off to dry here. That's what I was using just on Saturday. It's Sunday morning. I'm making this video here for you. Um, yeah, and then we've got our backpack bags and stuff. And just over there is our, sorry, that light's not very good today. <coughs> is our uh, vacuum chamber. Uh, so we vac seal all our products. Uh, price scale kind of off to the right hand side there. We vac seal all our products. It really helps extend the shelf life and the consumers are starting to get really familiar with it. Like they love it. They know that vac seal, they can stick it in the freezer and it's good for a uh, year and a half. So there's another kind of look at the meat shop floor. Fans on the background there, uh, some curing totes, uh, packaging boxes, cut and wrap pigs. We box them all up there with those guys. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the meat shop floor. Uh, we'll give you guys a tour of the cooler freezer next. Uh, I got upstairs area where I do the spice mixing. So if there's any questions, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. But that's kind of a quick tour of the meat shop floor. Uh, like I said, we mostly do sausage, do a little bit of butchering of pigs and stuff. And this setup works pretty good for what we got. Send me a, send me a link of your stuff if you got it. I'd like to see other, other floors, other stores, your own home setups. So we'll do the coolers and upstairs next. Okay guys, this is my cooler. Uh, it is an eight by 12 uh, cooler, walk-in cooler. So I run it at uh, zero degrees Celsius to two degrees Celsius. So I keep it real cold. Uh, meat doesn't freeze until minus one actually. So to get the maximum shelf life out of your stuff, you keep it as cold as possible, zero to two. Uh, as you can see, I got a couple pigs that came in on Saturday. Uh, these are going uh, back to the farmer. So they got killed out on the farm. We'll cut and wrap for him, uh, do hams, bacon, sausage, and it goes back to him. Uh, I, use, I, don't, I don't have a rail system as you can see, so I don't cut and wrap beef here. Um, but these racks are super handy. I think they're like $110 Canadian at uh, Costco and they were great chrome. Like I've had these for four years now. 
and there's just the smallest amount of rust down on the casters. So they're pretty cool and they've worked great for my setup. But uh, yeah, big two fan uh, condenser unit up there, as you can see above me, running it too. And yeah, I just got some, you know, flip my camera around here. Just some miscellaneous supplies that go into some meat shop uh, stuff. You got the casings over there. Uh, I buy the 2932s by the K or by the bucket there. I forget how many are in a bucket, but you know, just some pigs there to cut. Uh, a couple custom hams I pulled out first thing this morning that are cooling down. You know, a little jerky there, a little jerky there. No, they're on the top rack, right? You want your fully cooked stuff to be uh, never getting dripped on by something like a ham that's only partially cooked. So yeah, just the, that's kind of my cooler setup. Works pretty good. It's pretty cost effective to set up there. So move on to the freezer. Okay guys, this is the freezer. Not overly exciting. I run it at minus 18 degrees Celsius. I'm not familiar with what that is in Fahrenheit. Minus 18 to 20 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty damn cold. So this video is gonna be a little bit shorter. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's mostly just, you know, boxed up stuff. We got some box product uh, ready to go. A bunch of custom stuff here labeled up with people's names on it. Uh, you know, some other frozen, you know, things like I say for sausage making, you know, I got the bacon ends and stuff like that. Uh, we do a couple frozen products like we do a pre-cooked roast beef bag and au jus, hamburger patties. We do steaks for stores. Um, I got a two two fan condenser there blowing that cold air you know just a bunch of burgers and it's just basically cold storage i got racks and then i got another set of racks behind them there but yeah she's a pretty full freezer if you're building a meat shop you probably need a bigger freezer than you think hunting season this place is right full um i you know i didn't think i would need a freezer this big so that would be my recommendation to anyone that's watching this looking for to build the meat shop tips, build a bigger freezer than you think you need. And uh, I guess another thing too, if you are building your own meat shop, um, I didn't buy those coolers and freezers. Like as you can see, there's no seams, there's no joint joints. It's not like it's not the tongue and uh, groove male female clips. We oops, I'm focus on myself here. It's uh, we we built them ourselves, so we frame them in and we spray foam them because spray foam had the best R factor. So R factor is your insulation factor. Um, I think we got four inches of foam in there and they run pretty efficiently. Like in Canada here, it gets up to 30 degrees Celsius some days. So what is that in Fahrenheit? 90, 100, maybe? And they, they, they run pretty efficiently though. So if you are building a meat shop, they're, they're really not any more expensive to build them that way. Um, if you can do the framing and stuff yourself and they're, they're way more efficient. So that would be a recommendation I have for any guy that's setting up his own shop. Now I guess to the spice mixing area upstairs. All right there guys, this is where I got all my spices and stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll weigh my uh, sausage batches up ahead of time and then I'll mix up the spices behind me. I got a little gram scale and stuff. So I'll just take you up the stairs here. And I'll flip the camera around. But yeah, basically, this is my little spice mixing station. I got a bunch of spices in jars. Get a handle on this here for you guys. <clears throat> Going down below, I got a bunch of different spices that I uh, keep in smaller containers. We weigh them out here. Got a big box, of bag of salt, and we bag them up. Uh, we do every sausage batch individually. So in hunting season, we're a little bit slower than some other shops, but uh, we do every batch separate. And I think our customers like that quite a bit. So if you guys are doing that, uh, I'd suggest that. We get tons of repeat customers are pretty happy about that. So there's the spice mixing area. And then we got you know a little bit of gear over here, a little couple slow cookers, miscellaneous small stuff. This is my little antique meat collection, a little hand crank grinder. Uh, these little guys are horse tendons from Italy, they use them to poke into the prosciutto hams. If they come out smelling foul, they throw the ham out. I guess they're odorless. Uh, my little uh, bench top knife sharpener there, so I got a, a sandpaper wheel. Um, 
Oh, you guys are gonna ask me what grid is that? I'll have to look into that. And then I have a buffer wheel on the other side and a little humus stone or pumice stone. So you put that on there and get your knife at that 15 to 20 degree angle on this side, polish off the burrs on this side. Uh, yeah, it's mostly just dry storage up here. Every butcher shop needs a little dry storage. You know, store some casings, some of those uh, breakfast sausage and pepperoni casings. Every meat shop's got to do a little paperwork, food safety logs, got to show the health inspectors that's clean. And this is just more spices. I buy all my spices in two and a half kilogram, uh, five pound boxes there. Got multiple bags of salt, some sugar, brown sugar, ketchup, maple syrup, applesauce, uh, backpack bags. And then over here is my uh, freezer compressor running all the time and the cooler compressor. And it did get hot up here, so I did have to put an exhaust fan in. So little tip for anyone that's building their own shop or they got a compressor, I probably would have stuck these guys outside. Uh, they're just too warm six months of the year. So you know, little burger boxes and other boxes there. So that's my upstairs, guys. That's my dry storage. Um, that's pretty much everything in the meat shop. I'll give you a little top view down on the meat shop. Top of the smokehouse. It's a little dirty. It's my meat shop floor there. That's where we do all the work. I wouldn't have put an overhead door that big into the shop. But like I said, I didn't build it. I bought it and we finished up like a meat shop. Still works pretty good for receiving carcasses. Oh, that's what I forgot to mention is my little hoist over there. Uh, we use that for... Uh, lifting up pigs will break carcasses on there. So, you know, we'll hang an elk or deer or whatever off there. It's got a little meat hook right there. And uh, we'll use gravity uh, to debone the critters. Works really good. So that's a little top view of the meat shop, guys. And I'll just give you a, a quick little tour of the outside. And then that'll wrap up the meat shop tour. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, leave them down below and I'll be sure to answer them. Uh, depending on what you're looking for. If you're setting up your own meat shop, if you think this stuff's cool, let me know. If you got something cool, let me know. <laughs> but we'll go, we'll go outside. I almost forgot to show you my little retail area set up. So uh, we do, we retail meat out of here um, four days a week, Wednesday to Saturday. And then we also wholesale to a, about a half dozen or so kind of little local stores. And then we also do restaurants around here. Uh, so by me here is I have a little freezer for selling frozen stuff and over here I have the cooler for selling fresh sausage and as you can see behind me that's the meat cutting floor. I, I kept the concept open like some meat shops they got just the the retail area boxed off but I like having it open to my cutting floor because when customers come directly to me they can come in and they can see they can see things are clean and when there's walls, you know, there's no, when there's no walls, there's nothing to hide. They get to see what we're doing. They get to watch us work. I think they think that's kind of cool. Lots of them poke their head around the corner, check out the smokehouse. They get to smell all the smells. I, I would recommend that. That's been, that's been good. But here, I'll just, uh, you guys asked what products do you sell? Uh, so if you're starting up your own meat shop, maybe you'll get some ideas from these. And if you think any of these are cool, uh, leave a request down below and I'll, I'll try and make them up for you at some point. But, uh, Going from the top right, uh, we got a smoked apple sausage. That's a pork sausage with applesauce, smoked pork chops. We do a farmer's sausage. We do a bacon cheeseburger. These are all fully cooked. Uh, a Bavarian smoky, a ham and Swiss link, a ham and dill link. We got the three kinds of smokies, original cheddar, jalapeno cheddar. We do a garlic sausage, this guy over here, uh, which is actually a Polish. I used to call it a Polish sausage, no one would buy it, and I called it a garlic sausage, and now we sell 10 times as much. So, uh, beef pepperoni, jalapeno cheddar pepperoni. Uh, down there, we got a ham kielbasa. This is Sunday, usually I got a little more stocked up than this. Uh, Ribeye steaks, dry cured bacon, European wieners. We got a chipotle honey beef jerky, peppered beef jerky, and original beef jerky. Uh, lean beef dogs down there. Zip over to the cooler, or sorry, freezer here. Uh, we got some dry cured bacon, breakfast sausage. We do uh, breakfast sausage in small ones too. We do a maple blueberry breakfast sausage, which is probably the, one of the top five sellers in the store. Um, you know, it's probably burgers, maple blueberry breakfast sausage, smokies, cheese smokies, jalapeno cheddar, smoke or uh, pepperonis, and ham and Swiss are probably the biggest ones. And we got a chorizo over there, a fresh chorizo. We got cutlets. We got pork chops. 
American Southwest sausage. That one's a little bit spicy. It's salt, garlic, caraway, uh, jalapenos, uh, chipotle, and sweet corn. We got a German bratwurst down there. We got the Italian sausage. Every meat shop needs to have the Italian sausage. The bacon agar in the middle there. You know, they don't look that great right now, but uh, the bacon agar is ham flavored pork. Bits of cheddar cheese, dry cured bacon, and fried eggs. It's a wicked on a McMuffin bun. Got beef onion, we got some ribs and roasts down there. Uh, we got patties. I do uh, smoked briskets. This is the roast beef bag I talked about in the freezer there. So I smoke the roast beef, cool it down, slice it real thin, make up au jus, put the au jus in the bag and freeze it. So all they gotta do is just boil that bag or open that bag up, thaw it out in the fridge, warm it up. Uh, pulled pork ready to go there. Then we got a bunch of steaks. Ground, tenderloin, ribeye, pork chops, top sirloin, strip loin, beef ribs down on the bottom. So yeah, with, with those just 30 products or so here, that keeps us pretty busy. I mean, you could do, you could do an endless amount of products. I'd like to, but uh, that stuff there, those are probably the most popular in my area. I don't know where you're at, but those are pretty popular up here in Canada. A little till setup, and again, that's what the customers see when they come in. So now I'll give you that tour of the outside of the meat shop. All right there guys, this is the outside of my meat shop here. Uh, I'm out on an acreage, it's kind of nice. I forgot to mention this building over here. I have a second cooler that I, uh, I store wild game in and pigs and stuff. Uh, Cause that other cooler is pretty small. This one's 16 by 12 or something like that. But anyways, this is the outside of the meat shop. So I'll just give you a little tour. Uh, of course, you got to have a little bit of garbage disposal that outside the big overhead door. Uh, that's a little side door people come through. Uh, so the acreage I live on here, that's my house. Um, pretty convenient commute. It's really actually really nice being close to your meat shop because you, you, you can be running and smoking stuff all, all night long. And if you have to drive 45 minutes to pull stuff out of the smokehouse, that's no good. But yeah, it's basically, you know. Just a shop that we finished up like a meat shop. Uh, I'll take you around the back side here. It's not as, this is kind of the view and the yard. And customers kind of like, hopefully, keep the yard nice and clean for them. <laughs> uh, that's my burning barrel. You know, uh, I burn bones in there sometimes and stuff. Back side of the meat shop, uh, sort of customers don't see. You know, well, there's a little storage, pallets. Uh, compressor for the cooler back side of the, the garbage bins and stuff so there you go guys there's the tour of the meat shop i hope you enjoyed it i uh, hope you got some tips or got some ideas and uh, i appreciate again the request to make this video it was really cool i didn't think i would uh, be making this one so appreciate it guys if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe we'll make more in the future